Hello, my name is Sean Peterson. My native name is Qualsius, and I'm the artist responsible for creating the welcome figure in downtown Tacoma. This video follows the project's beginning through its installation and dedication ceremony. In 2002, I worked with Portland Avenue Business District to enhance and reflect Coast Salish culture through public art. This was achieved by integrating glass and metal art into the existing streetscape that was being enhanced at the time. Part of the proposed plan included creating a totem pole that could be visible from the I-5 freeway, yet I shared with the committee that this tradition actually stems from southeastern Alaskan and First Nations cultures, and in its place I proposed creating a welcome figure. Welcome figures are human sculptures that vary in scale, either male, female, or in pairs. They often have arms reached out to greet visitors into one's village or territory. In 2004, the City of Tacoma, the Tacoma Art Museum, and the Puyallup Tribe partnered to support the Welcome Figure Project, set to install at Tolson Plaza, which is actually a village known to the Puyallup people as Puyallupubsh. Originally, the figure was designed to be 8 feet tall, but because of the open space, the scale was pushed up to 20 feet. And because I had little experience on this scale, I consulted Macaw artist Greg Colfax, who agreed to join the project, as he had past experience with large installations of this kind. In September 2007, after years of searching for logs, we acquired one from the Quinault Nation. In recent years, old-growth western red cedar has become scarce, and to add to the complication, I had specified a preference for a windfall log. Windfall logs are naturally fallen timber, and although under our tribal treaty rights we are granted timber for cultural acquisition, I didn't want to exploit my tribe's resources as this was a city project. Due to the nature of windfall logs, they often have fracture lines that run through them, and this was the case here. So we decided to mill the log in half, following the fracture line, cutting it out. Although this resolved one problem, we had to devise a plan that worked with the pieces we were left with. After several meetings spanning a year, we agreed on an installation plan with the consulting engineers approved by the City of Tacoma. We moved the log to the Puyallup Tribal Youth Center and inspected the log to designate sections for the components needed. The hat section had to be laminated from several planks left over, eliminating areas prone to rot. One of the major challenges we faced is that wood warps in the natural drying process, making it difficult to laminate. To handle this, in the most time-effective way, we milled the large pieces and addressed smaller areas with hand planes before temporarily joining it together. Once we were satisfied with fitting the pieces, we set them together using steel leg bolts and transported it to a worksite provided by the Puyallup tribe for the duration of the project. Once there, we began shaping the body in preparation for the internal steel support. At the end of the blocking out phase, Greg Colfax handed the project over to me alone. Although I was intimidated at first, I had a couple of days of help here and there from various friends coming to visit. To keep the project from slowing, I called in contractor friend Corey Nunn to be my project manager. His contribution was significant because it allowed me to continue to do the carving that I needed to do, and he also was key in solving some of the unique problems that came up throughout the project. Because there were so many unpredictable challenges involved, it was nice to know that I had someone on board and I wouldn't be facing those things alone. One of the main challenges was the size of the figure itself. This coupled with its unique assembly required a number of tactical solutions. Early on, I contracted first mentor Steve Brown to make some custom tools, along with others I inherited and ones that I had made 
for the demand of the scale of this project. Here we can see part of the complexity of joining pieces. Normally, a sculpture doesn't call for fitting pieces together, so it added several hours to the job. In order to meet the final deadline in the last month of work, 16-hour days were pretty common. I was fortunate enough to have some of my artist friends lend a hand for a few days here and there. Here, my friend Jason Gobin, a Tulalip artist, came in to help paint the Thunderbird on the dress. Thunderbird has been known to the Puyallup people to have a healing power. Here's some footage of the steel support going inside the figure. When people came to see the worksite, it was nearly impossible to explain how the whole thing came together. So I worked with Google SketchUp to create a scale 3D model to show people. Because the log was milled in half, it allowed us to create the torso that would attach to a steel plate suspended above by two steel pipes. These pipes were then covered by the legs and two halves of a cedar base that sat atop a concrete base that went six feet into the ground. Then the arms and hat were attached once installed. The installation day was September 13th, 2010. It was decided with all parties involved to have the blessing dedication ceremony days later. Part of this due to the complexity of the installation and that once installed there were finished touches of paint and concealing plugs that had to be put in place and allowed to dry before carving down. The figure was honored with songs by our Puyallup singers in part with our traditions. Sculptures of this nature are regarded with respect this figure honors our ancestral village, so we are mindful of that in her presence. In the days following, my family worked hard to get things in order for the blessing ceremony on September 18, 2010. Because of the long work hours, my son didn't get to see me much, and he was happy to see the project come to an end. At the dedication, several council members of the Puyallup tribe spoke, as well as cultural leaders and witnesses. In our traditions, the figure commission must be acknowledged by paying the witnesses and honoring those involved in making it all possible. One of the highlights of the day was the sharing of what's known as a swan dance, which hadn't been done in several years prior. Cultural leader and family relation from Skokomish, Delbert Miller, shared a song specifically for that day. Eagle Down was placed at her feet as a sign of nobility and high rank during the song, and the unveiling was done by Vice Chairman of the Puyallup Tribe, Bill Sterud. At the time, I was overwhelmed with the responsibility of completing something this monumental. Looking back, I'm grateful for that opportunity to be the one who carved the figure that honors our ancestral village. I want to conclude these videos by thanking my family, my friends, and all those involved who made this project possible. My hands are up to you.